Hi everybody, hope you're doing all right. Um, we're gonna start a new unit today and over the next couple weeks, and this unit is going to be on statics. Now, in statics, we're going to be looking at forces on an object and those forces, how they affect the interior of the object. Just to give you a quick rundown of what this means, for example, if we have a simple bridge here, it's held on each side, and we apply some forces to it, we're going to be looking at, one, how much force is on these individual ends, both vertical and horizontal forces, and we want to know, are there tension forces on these individual, what we call members, inside the bridge, or are there compression forces pushing the pieces to together? So that's where we're going to be heading here over the next couple weeks. Um, today, what we're going to look at is we're going to start with something called moments. So we're going to try to do this and keep it as similar to our normal classroom experience as possible. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and we'll direct your attention over here. So we're going to start with moments. Now, what is a moment? A moment is a force that wants to rotate something. So for example, if I had a wrench and I applied a force to it out here on the wrench, we all know that if the bolt is loose enough that the wrench is going to rotate, all right? Just because it's an emergency doesn't mean we cut back on our animation quality. So we apply this force and it creates a rotational force. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, hey, this kind of sounds familiar. Um, didn't we talk about something like this earlier in the year? And we did, we kind of talked about torque. Torque is very similar to moments. It wants to create this rotation of an object, all right? And we're gonna be looking at some of the same things. So we have the force itself that's applied, we'll call that F, and this is our pivot point. What do we spin around? What is the point that stays stationary while everything else rotates? That's our pivot. The distance between these two objects is distance, and we're going to designate that with the letter D. Now, we also refer to the material in between our pivot point and the force here as the lever arm. This is the object through which we translate that moment and cause the actual object to have this rotational uh, force on it. When we measure this, we have to measure the distance perpendicular to the force. So notice the force is being applied this way. It's on this line. And we're measuring the distance this way. So that is a right angle. If you do not measure these such that the way you're measuring distance is perpendicular to the force, you're going to be wrong, all right? So if my force wasn't coming in at that direction, if instead my force was coming in this way, I would continue this line. And when I got out here, I'd say, am I still measuring this perpendicular? Is this a right angle? No, nope, that's not a right angle. So we'd be measuring that incorrectly. And you'd say, well, how do I find the right way to measure it then? We have to measure through the pivot point perpendicular. So this would actually be our distance in that situation, all right? The force itself, we're going to say, acts on a line. So it's, we're not gonna say the force is right here. We're gonna say the force is this line running this entire distance, going to infinity that way, going to infinity that way. That whole line represents our force. And as long as we're measuring from our pivot point perpendicular to that line, that's how we want to measure the distance. There is, for every angle, a way to measure it to that pivot point where the measurement is still perpendicular. All right? It's always possible to do. So please put that in your notes. If you're not already taking notes, pause the video, get out your notes, um, and write that down. The big thing here, the distance, the way we measure the distance must be, must, like underline it, stars, 
if you can write in bold, write in bold, um, must be perpendicular to the line the force acts on. Okay? <clears throat> so, how do we calculate the moment? When it's all said and done, we've measured what the force is, we've measured the distance, perpendicular to the force, and we're ready to calculate the moment, symbol for moment, just M, and the moment is this distance times the force. It's actually the same equation as when we measured torque earlier in the year. So a moment is the distance times the force. Now, if we think about the units here for a moment, in the, in the US system, we measure force in pounds, pounds force, so LBF, and we measure distance in feet. We also measure distance in inches. And so when we're multiplying a force times a distance, we're multiplying pounds force times feet, and we would get pound feet, or we could get pound inch. All right. Notice we've multiplied the two units together. We just have both of them. In the metric system, the SI system, force is always measured in newtons. Distance, usually measured in meters, although you could measure it again in centimeters. And when we get done, our moment is then measured in newton meters or centimeter, sorry, newton meters or newton centimeters. There we go. All right. Both are acceptable, um, but you do want to label them so that it's clear what exactly it is that you're doing. <clears throat> now, as we all know, if I had a nut and a wrench, pushing on it this way, or pushing on it that way are very different things, okay? So the direction matters. Now these might actually have the same value for the moment. For example, this could be, you know, 10 pounds, and this could be two feet, and this could also be two feet and 10 pounds, in which case you'd say, well, our equation says a moment is a force times a distance, and you'd look at both of these and you'd say, well, I've got 20 pound feet on both of them. <clears throat> these are the same, but we, we know intrinsically these are not the same. And the way we keep track of that is we say, which one's clockwise and which one's counterclockwise. And we're going to designate one of those as positive and one of those as negative. Now, the traditional way to do this and the way we're gonna follow is we say the counterclockwise is positive and clockwise is negative. I know a lot of students don't like that. They think, hey, the numbers on a clock go up when I go clockwise, so that should be the positive direction, but it's not how it is. And the reason for this actually ties back to mathematics. So. Don't get angry at engineers, get angry at mathematicians. Um, if you think about a, a uh, grid in mathematics, a uh, coordinate plane, this is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. Notice they're numbered this way. Also, that was a darn good semicircle there. So they're numbered this way. And notice they go up counterclockwise. That's why we've designated counterclockwise as the positive direction. And we have a couple of ways to remember this. So, like we said, counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. What we can do is we use what's called the right hand rule. Now, unsurprisingly, to use the right hand rule, you need to use your right hand. That one makes an L not your right hand, all right? So, your right hand. What we're gonna do is we're going to take this hand and we're going to curl the fingers so they match the direction of rotation, all right? Here's an example, yep, very good. Here's an example. 
We've got a wrench that's going that way. And what you want to do is you want to be like very like positive and self-affirming about this. So you say, here's my hand. I'm going to curl my finger so it rotates the same direction as the wrench. When I curl it that way, the thumb's pointing at me. And what you want to do is when you do this, you say to yourself, hey, who's awesome? This guy. That's a very positive statement. The thumb's pointing at you. It's positive. All right. Conversely, if I have this, I need to take, again, my right hand. It's very tempting to take your left hand and be like, you know, do it backwards. Don't do that. Remember, right hand rule, take your left hand, put it behind your back or something. Take your right hand, you want to curl the fingers so they go that way. Now, my fingers don't bend that way, all right? So I'm going to take my hand, and I have to turn it this way and curl it that way. And you'd be like, who's the guy? Someone over there, all right? That's a negative statement. So this is the negative direction, clockwise. Negative, all right? And our counterclockwise, the one before it was positive. So here's an example. We're going to go ahead and look at this. We want to check a couple of things. Remember, our moment is force times distance. We know our force, we know our distance. Next, we want to ask ourselves, is this perpendicular? And we'll say yes. So everything is okay. So we know our force is 20, our distance is nine inches. Since we know both of them, we can get in here and we can say our force 20, our distance nine inches. If I wanted to convert that to feet, I could, but 20, pounds, nine inches, and I'm going to get 180, but is this positive or negative? So use our right hand rule. Um, we can take our hand, we curl it, the direction it's going to rotate that way, it's pointing away from us. Well, that means it is negative. So our moment is negative 180, and this would be pound inches. If I wanted to convert this to feet, um, I could have, instead of saying nine inches, I could have said that this was 0.75 feet. And then I would have got 15 pound feet. All right, they're both correct. Oh, negative 15 pound feet or negative 180 pound inches. They're both the same. All right, and you can see they're going to do the math right here. They went ahead and converted it to feet. They knew it was a negative direction, so when they got it, they said negative 15 pound feet. The negative implies that it's clockwise. What you don't want to do is say, oh, this is negative 15 pound feet clockwise because you either need one or the other. This tells us it's clockwise, that tells us it's clockwise. What we've done is we've kind of created a double negative. You're like, well, if it's negative clockwise, that means it's counterclockwise and we don't want to play that game. So either say it's negative 15 pound feet and we'll just say, oh, it must be clockwise because clockwise is the negative direction or say it's 15 pound feet clockwise, all right? Don't do this, pick one or the other. I prefer that, just say negative. We know what direction it is. We don't need any other information, okay? All right, let's look at the next one. So we're gonna be looking at the same things here. We have a little bit longer wrench. This wrench is a foot long. We've got 20 pounds on it. Again, we're going to say, hey, here's a force of 20. We have a distance, and we're gonna check the distance. Is the distance measured perpendicular? It is, so that distance is right, of one foot. And which way is it rotating? And you don't have to do the hand thing every time. If you can just look at this and you're like, hey, that's clockwise, well, I know that this is going to be moment is force 
times distance, and since it's clockwise, I'll just put a negative in there, and I'm gonna find a moment of negative 20 pound feet. All right, go ahead. They see it there. Please make sure you're putting this in your notes. Now, those two are relatively straightforward. Let's say we bought a wrench and, uh, well, maybe the handling was just a little, a little rough on its way through the, through the UPS sorting facility. Now, at first this looks the same. People are tempted to look at this and say, oh, hey, the force, 20 pounds, all right? I know that in the moment. And they want to look right here and they're like, oh, one foot but we have to make this check. This is our force. It operates on this line. Is that line perpendicular to the way we've measured it? No, all right? In fact, they're, they're parallel. They're as unperpendicular as something can be. So we don't want to measure it this way. Now, which way should we measure? Remember, we have to measure from here. If I measure it that way, no, that's not perpendicular either. If I measure this way, no. And what we find is right here is the only way to measure it that's actually perpendicular. So the distance we want is this distance. All right? So we're gonna break that down and then we find, oh, okay, three inches. So the distance we're going to use here, sorry, distance, not moment, is not gonna be one foot. It's actually three inches. This number actually doesn't matter at all for what we're doing. We only want the three inch number three inches or 0.25 feet. And we'd say, all right, which way is it gonna turn? That's clockwise. Again, using my right hand, thumb points away from me, so that's clockwise. So I'd say my moment, I know it's negative because it's clockwise, negative force times distance. So negative 20 times 0.25 is going to be negative five pound feet for my moment. Again, if I left it in inches, I'd have negative 60 pound inches, and that's also correct. All right, and they're doing the same thing here. Now, <clears throat> let's say we have this wrench. I don't know what happened to this one. Um, This is why you don't buy tools on Craigslist, I guess. So we've got this wrench, something bad has happened. I have my force again, all right, we know that. But what distance do I want? Well, I have my pivot point here. I can measure in any direction. As long as it goes through that pivot point and is perpendicular to this force. Now the tempting thing is to say, oh, let's measure right here, all right? And people say, all right, here's my force. Is this 90 degrees? No, it's not. So we don't actually care what this diagonal is. It doesn't matter. Remember, this force goes infinitely both ways. So I just need to connect to this line in a way that's perpendicular and runs through a pivot. There is perpendicular and runs through the pivot. So the distance we care about is this distance. All right, now in this particular one, they've given it to you in two parts. You say, oh, to here's eight inches, to here to there's another 10 inches. So when I get all done, I'd say my distance is 18 inches or 1.5 feet. And from there, it's the same as it has been. It's going clockwise, it's negative. We have our force, we have our distance. You guys can see how they did the math on that one and it comes out like we would expect it to come out. One and a half times 20 gives us those 30 pound feet. No one's here, lights turned off. All right, now it doesn't have to be only wrenches, all right? So for example, this is like a steering wheel on like a old time boat or something. And we see it here and we're going to apply a force to it. 
All right. So this is 100 Newton force. Where is the pivot point? Well, it's the center of the wheel, right? How do I measure, and this runs on a line infinitely in both directions, how do I measure from here to that line with a perpendicular line? So I'm going to measure right there. That's my perpendicular distance. And we find what that distance is. This time, notice it's metric. So they had it in centimeters. They went ahead and converted it to meters. That's okay. You could leave it in centimeters also if you wanted. So 0.5 meters is our distance. We have our force, 100 newtons. And this time, remember it's curving this way. So who's awesome? This guy, right? That's positive. So that's positive. And we have a positive moment of 50 newton meters. All right. Now, what if what if we weren't pulling straight down on the left side of the wheel there? All right. What if something was pulling at an angle? In this case, 50 degrees. Well, we could do this two ways. The first way is how I showed you. We're going to stretch off this line. We're going to measure right there. That's fine. We can do the trig. We can do that. The other way is to take this force and we're going to break it down into two forces. One that's vertical and one that's horizontal and calculate each of them separately. We're going to deal with that on another day. So we're going to kind of skip through this for right now and come back to it. So, you may ask yourself, what does things spinning have to do with bridges? Like, how does this actually come into play with an object for statics? Remember we said the static objects, by definition, static means not moving. So it can either be an object's not moving or even an object's just not accelerating. But if we have something making an object spin, those forces are not balanced. It's going to make it spin faster and faster. Like, how does that apply? So in statics, what we do is we have a couple of rules. And one of the rules in statics is that if we add together all of the moments, so if you say, hey, I've got moments, and we're taking all of our moments around a certain point. So, you know, if this is my bridge, I'd say, oh, this is point A. So I say, oh, this force makes it spin around point A. So that's our moment one around point A. Or if I have a force here, that's moment two around A. If I had other forces, et cetera. If I add up all of the moments around a particular point, it's going to equal zero. Now, we look at it this way. We say we could add the forces like that. Um, math people like to use a special symbol for this. They say the sum of the moments around point A is zero, all right? And we can use this rule to help us find values for some of the forces. When we say that everything equals zero, we say that the object is in equilibrium. So when it's in equilibrium, it's either not spinning or it's not accelerating at least, all right? And the big key here is what we just said. The sum of all the moments around any point is going to be zero. So go ahead, make sure you put that in your notes. One of the conditions of equilibrium is that the sum of moments is zero. And this is them writing what we had just set up there. Two ways of writing this, the sum, the symbol means sum of the moments equals zero, or if I add all the moments together, which is what a sum is, it's going to equal zero. And it doesn't matter if I have two moments or three or 15, it has to equal zero, all right? Now, let's imagine we're going back to like the first week of school here. We've got a seesaw. All right, it can pivot, as you see. We're gonna put two objects on it, and one of them is gonna be a lot bigger. Now normally, this is what would happen. The bigger object would tilt the seesaw and it would fall. This is not equilibrium, because the, the seesaw is tilting, it's falling here, but we can change the distances. All right. So we're going to say this point right here, let's call this point A. 
So what we know is the sum of the moments around point A equals zero. And we solved this problem before using some of the rules for simple machines, but today we're going to solve this using moments. So let's say our one bear is 25 feet, and our one bear, I'm sorry, 25 pounds, and our one bear is 40 pounds. So let's think of our moments here. This is force one. So I'm going to call this moment one, so make it rotate that way. And our bear on the other side is force two, so I'm going to call this moment two, and let's make it rotate that way. So we're going to add up our individual moments. So the sum of the moments, so moment one plus moment two equals zero. Let's break these down a little further. What is a moment? It's a force times a distance. So moment one is force one times distance one. Moment two is force two times distance two. Now, moment one, notice, it's positive. Moment two is negative, so I'm going to make that negative equals zero. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the values I know. So this is 25 pounds. My distance here is four feet plus, and remember this is negative, so I'm going to say plus, and my force is 40 pounds, so I'm going to say negative 40 times, and my distance here we don't know, so I'm still going to just call it distance two equals zero. At this point, it's just an algebra problem. We have 100 plus negative 40 d2 equals zero. I'm going to go ahead and move that to the other side. 100 equals, and when I move it to the other side, it becomes positive, 40 times distance two. If I divide, distance two is going to equal 100 divided by 40, which is going to say that distance two equals 2.5 feet. All right, so that's how we would go about doing that one. Right. They're going to do the same thing, and hey, what would you know? We can do math. So it becomes 2.5 feet, and there it is. We can say the same thing for a basic beam. So, in this case, we have a beam. We're going to label our points. We're going to call this triangle on the left side A, go on the right B, and we're going to put a weight at a point that we're just going to call C. It honestly doesn't matter which end we start with, but we know that if we have to hold up this package in the center, this package has a weight of 35 pounds, that However much A pushes up and however much B pushes up, it has to equal 35. So <clears throat> we're going to start here and we'll say I'm going to take my sum of moments around A. Now it doesn't always have to be A. It could be B. It doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to take our sum of moments around A. Our sum of moments around A, we have two things. We have the moment caused by this package of C. So this equals zero. So we're going to say we have the moment AC, the one right here, and moment, and we don't think of this one right away, but this is pushing up. This triangle has to push the beam up so it doesn't fall. So this actually creates a moment also. So this force right here, we'll call this moment AB pushing up. Now we're going to do our right hand rule. C is negative. The moment at B tilts it counterclockwise is positive. So I'm going to say that's negative. This is going to equal zero. <clears throat> I'm also going to say this is force A in the Y direction. And that's how I'm going to do it 
in case there was an x direction I'm going to clarify and I'll call this force B in the y direction so <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look at these so moment AC a moment is force and the force is provided by package C here and the distance is the distance from A to C. Remember it's negative. Next, we're going to do this moment. It was positive because it's going counterclockwise, so I'll leave it positive, so I'm going to call this force VY. So the force from B in the Y direction, and my distance is the distance from point A to point B. And I know this equals zero. Some of this I know already. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. So force C, I'll say negative 35, and my distance here is three feet. Plus, I don't know how much this force is, but I know the distance here is 10 feet. So unknown force, I'll leave it as force BY, and I'll leave my distance as 10 feet. Again, we're gonna have algebra here. Um, 35 times 3 is 105, so negative 105 plus force BY times 10 equals 0. I'm going to move this to the other side, so 10 times force BY equals 105, force BY equals 10.5. Five. So I know this force is 10.5 pounds, and once I know this one, honestly, if this has to hold up 35 pounds, I'm holding up 10.5 pounds on that side, I'd say, well, how much is left, right? So I'd say I've got 24.5 pounds of force on this side. Right. So, you guys have two problems that I want you to do. There you go. Just notice they get the same things we got. So, I've got two problems I want you guys to do. We're going to take a quick grade here. So, let's look at the first one. So first one, we've got, again, just a simple wrench, and we're going to apply a force this way. Our distance is 2.5 feet, and our force here is 18 pounds, all right? I want you to go ahead and find the moment. Don't forget to positive or negative signs, make sure you use the right one. Alright, so alright. The second problem I want you guys to look at. one. So we've got a beam, very similar to the last problem. It's held on each end and we're going to put a weight in the center here. All right, let's say it's a person standing on the beam. Our person will weigh 150 pounds. They're going to be five feet from this end and the total length of the beam is 16 feet. I'm going to call this point A, point B, and our person here is going to be at point C. All right. We're going to call the force, putting this up, force a in the y direction and the force here, force 
B in the y direction. But I want you to find what is force B in the y direction. All right, so that's it for today. Um, tomorrow we're going to look at moments a little bit more. Um, until that time, take care of yourselves, and hopefully I'll see you soon.